Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. So today we have Mr. Santosh Kamane. And he is going to talk to us on the role of cybersecurity in banking and financial industry. Let me introduce you to Mr. Santosh. Santosh is a cybersecurity leader and CISO over 18 years of progressive experience in building information security and risk management programs and resilient systems for fintech and banking industries in India and USA. Currently, he is the CEO and co-founder at CyberFit Solutions, a company known for its patented product, Wipeout Secure Data, Erasure Solution. Santosh has worked earlier with DBS Tech India, which is DBS Bank, as a CISO for SVP Risk and Resilience. Please welcome Mr. Santosh. Thank you, Romila and team uh, InstaSafe for uh, the introduction. I'm happy to be part of this webinar and you know share my views. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, with this, let's move on to uh, you know the questions for this webinar today. So, sir, uh, uh, we are very glad that you're here with your rich experience in cybersecurity for banking, sir. Uh, my first question to you would be. If you could please uh, tell us the journey of technology transformation that banking industry has gone through in the last decade and how cybersecurity has caught up on this journey. Uh, definitely, I think it's been almost 20 years since I you know, started my career. And um, I clearly re remember you know, when, when we started uh, you know, uh, this information risk management practice you know, back then, uh, information security was still settling in, uh, in terms that, you know, it was still not accepted as a, you know, separate dedicated function uh, within organizations. So that was uh, a big challenge. And uh, definitely the lack of awareness, not only amongst the users, even the businesses, right, the leadership board, uh, nobody uh, really was keen on, you know, uh, adopting these practices. But over the years, you know, with uh, technology, um, you know, changes, adoption at a rapid pace, uh, fortunately, uh, the regulators have been moving, uh, you know, at the right pace. Like if you see RBI, for example, in India or, you know, in US, you have Fed or in Singapore, you have MS. So they have been, you know, setting up the right regulations, enforcing it uh, across organizations. They are making sure that, you know, cybersecurity is a top-down approach. So that is, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, making the impact that there should be. So in a way, I think, you know, um, it's, it's a holistic approach today. And uh, not only banks, you know, even the non-banking industries, they are moving in the right direction. It still might take some time, you know, for, uh, you know, practices like risk management, GRC, threat intelligence to be adopted. But I, I see that, you know, uh, you know, uh, in, in place very soon. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, I think that was very insightful um, answer. And yes, cybersecurity, the way it is shaping up in our country is interesting. Thanks to CISOs like you for bringing the awareness to us. So uh, with sure. this, I would, I would like to ask you, so what is the cybersecurity solution stack implemented within the banking industry? There would be so many uh, cybersecurity solutions at networks and application levels, right? So can you give an insight on how to, how to secure uh, the banking industry in a better manner? Well, um, I mean, all of us know that, you know, banking industry uh, will always be the prime target for cyber criminals. There's no doubt. Uh, obviously, it's not just money. It's, you know, your reputation. It's your consumer trust. It is your, you know, brand. So in that context, you know, this will continue to be, a, a, you know, a area of target. Now, unless there is a well-disciplined, well-organized approach to, you know, tackle uh, uh, cybersecurity, uh, you know, it, it cannot be, uh, it, it cannot bring that, you know, impact. Like, for example, uh, what I feel that, you know, number one, you need to have something like three layers of, uh, or three lines of defense uh, network. 
where you know you clearly have your risk management practices very matured to the point uh, you know to the point where your business users clearly know you know how to report and identify risks where you have the correct mechanisms as you know your second level of uh, defenses they know how to implement you know risk uh, assessment controls they measure the effectiveness of the risks as well as controls they take it to the leadership and uh, there is a you know independent uh, you know information assurance uh, party like auditors so it has to be a holistic approach now coming back to solutions obviously um, uh, you know like earlier we were talking about the technology adoption so bank today you know or any financial entity for that matter it doesn't work in its own uh, uh, you know uh, secluded uh, you know uh, environment right you have partners you have payment banks then you have vendors subcontractors you have apis that lets you you know connect to a different uh, party so with so much of you know interaction like a data interaction with back and forth there is so much of data you know uh, inflow as well as you know outflow uh, from your entities uh, so this is where uh, there is a stricter need for you know uh, managing security by uh, addressing people process and technology risk right educating your people uh, optimizing your processes and technology in terms of you know uh, something that you know uh, keeps you ahead of the game like for example you know you should have a critical infrastructure or sock with the best of the tools right uba you know the seams sore capabilities your people should be you know um, continuously logging monitoring alerting on uh, you know the various events um, that that may be you know happening because threats are targeting you all the time uh, that's one then your processes like for example you know there could be gaps you know like uh, banks typically have something called as maker checker where every change needs to be validate, validated right your user onboarding offboarding devices getting into your environment provisioning deprovisioning so all of these controls um, they are typically listed in you know most of the regulations so this is where banks should make sure that you know they are continuously uh, you know adhere to and audit it all the time Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, that was a very important and uh, insightful answer from your side. So, uh, you know, we, a few days ago, uh, we had a session internally where one of our colleagues said that the hackers are always 200 times ahead of, you know, the security. So we see that hackers are continuously trying new ways to breach, right? So how does, uh, you know, the banking industry tackle that and how does it work? Right. I, I mean, in the recent times, uh, this is where, you know, uh, you see uh, security, you know, which is primarily offense and defense, right? So earlier, the focus was more on, you know, uh, how do you build your strong defense? Uh, but but it's uh, good to see, you know, more and more organizations are now focusing on building the offense capabilities, like their red teams. So typically, you have, you know, blue teams, red teams, and purple teams. So red teams, uh, you know that uh, group needs to be strengthened with best of the tools you know i mean their objective is to break into your security controls and um, you know play the role of that hacker you know in a ethical uh, you know persona and um, you know report those vulnerabilities or findings and this is where uh, when it comes to uh, red teaming uh, what uh, leadership or board can do uh, you know uh, at the least is to you know invest in good tools good people and uh, give it uh, enough time because some of the red teaming exercise for example you know these days you heard about you know you uh, uber for example uh, it was compromised with the uh, multi factor authentication fatigue you know i mean we all thought that you know mfa is uh, you know secure control but even that can be compromised right so your red teaming exercises should include something like you know uh, setting up a fake phishing site and making sure the mfa request they are also checked and you you know uh, uh, you know uh, get get all these possible scenarios kind of tested social engineering you know your web vulnerabilities so red teaming scope is very very important and then uh, also supplement it with your auditing capabilities 
like you know if you do your audits every six months you know with wider focus you know focusing on every area from your hr to sales to you know your engineering teams to your facilities then you know that you know all all uh, checkpoints are covered thank you um, i think uh, there was you pointed out very uh, you know important things uh, and i'm sure this will create a lot of awareness among uh, our viewers yeah so with this i think uh, we'll end the webinar is there anything else you would like to talk about in banking or you know, well, uh, definitely. I mean, what I feel uh, that, uh, uh, you know, especially in banking industry, uh, the adoption of uh, zero trust principles, right? And this is where, you know, a lot of players, I think, including InstaSafe, I, I see that, you know, uh, the major risks uh, lie with, you know, uh, uh, you know, the user authentication devices and, you know, applications, infrastructure, and a holistic, uh, uh, holistic, uh, you know, solution, which is adopted as a practice, uh, that's going to be the need for the future. And uh, that's something I think, uh, you know, we are doing well. It can be better, but I'm sure, you know, it's it 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 is, you know, uh, its own uh, evolution, you know. So uh, I think we'll, we'll uh, you know, get it there soon. Thank you, sir. Um, so, you know, uh, rightly pointed out, zero trust is one of the ways to go ahead with your cybersecurity needs. And we thank you so much for being with us on this platform today. Thank you.